What's up you guys, welcome back to the podcast. I don't know what episode this is because we have a bunch saved up now. So you're gonna see this episode every Sunday and Wednesday. So make sure if you're not subscribed already, subscribe and please hit the like button because it helps out a lot. Um, slowly but surely we're getting there with all 31 or 32 of you guys. So the goal is, well, we should set a goal. Like 100 before. One trillion, billion, gajillion. Yeah. What movie is that from? Awesome Powers. Okay. Well, well, we want a lot of you guys to follow us, so follow us. Uh, today's episode, we're going to talk about being a CrossFit coach. Yeah, why did how you, you, became why a did you coach. became a CrossFit coach? Because um, I like yelling at people. Oh. Yeah, I like telling people, you know, that they need to go faster and that they're not good enough. I like seeing people PR um, and then reminding them that I can do more weight than them. <laughs> yeah, watch them PR, then you lift the bar after mm-hmm. they PR. Yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. And when they ask me questions, I call them, like, you're dumb. They're like, is, it, is this a clean? And they go overhead. I'm like, no, you idiot. That's my favorite, that's my favorite about it, coaching for sure. Um, but in all reality, like, we love coaching. Been coaching for six years for me. Six years. Uh, I got my level one in June of 2014. So almost five years. Um, and we both, we didn't start coaching at the same gyms. But we like both. We very quickly we started coaching together. Mm-hmm. Um, so we learned a lot together, and we definitely. Um, I don't know. It was a journey together. Yeah. So I just know way more than Hudson. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so you want to start with how like you like your let's, process of becoming a coach? Yeah. Well, let's talk about like when you started CrossFit because I feel like that's for me. That's when I started realizing that I wanted to be a coach. Okay. Uh, so I remember starting CrossFit, and a lot of the cues that I would get. I would see other people doing things wrong, and I really wanted to say something, uh, but I knew it wasn't my, like, I, it's not good to do that, not to just go around, because when you're a coach and you experience people that do that, it's really not that awesome. You'd rather them ask the questions to you so that you can help them out, just to make sure nobody's getting hurt and nobody's moving incorrectly. And just because, like, let's say, if you're someone in the gym that doesn't have, like, a level one or any type of, like, degree or certification like just because you lift more than someone doesn't mean that you know like oh I can teach you how to snatch because right. I lift so much weight. right and it's not I mean it, it, my I love when people help each other out uh, but now I understand why the coaches would be like hey Roderick like let us coach and you know you keep doing your thing so I started seeing a lot of those things I started doing my own research and then I started uh, kinesiology as my major in school and I started realizing that the CrossFit coaches had their level one and then they had other full-time jobs. So they were only teaching everybody what they knew from experience, not necessarily like the science behind it. And a lot of their answers were very vague, you know, like, hey, I want to get stronger. And the coach would say, well, lift more weight. Okay, how much weight? How many times? How many reps? Which exercises? How often? Like those questions weren't being answered. And that was really, really frustrating for me uh, because I didn't have any of those answers yet. I didn't know. Uh, I was brand new to the sport, so I used Google as often as I could. Uh, and then I would go to my teachers and ask them as well because it was just so interesting to me. Uh, so that's where like, ooh, I think I wanna coach because I don't want people to have to go through the same thing that I did, which was getting really vague uh, answers to questions, um, getting pretty much like said that I was not like, like made me feel dumb sometimes and I'd be like hey uh, you know like I want to do better at you know squat cleans like what should I do they're like front squats I'm like I, well I don't know I'm brand new to this you know don't make me feel like an idiot it makes me not want to be here anymore so I just wanted to be the person that I wish I had when I started CrossFit mm-hmm. um, so yeah that's kind of like where my want to give people information and coach them led from is like I was tired of getting treated not that greatly from coaches and I wanted to be the opposite so people could have a good experience with the coaches that they had. Just like how you said back in the day I think it's starting to when CrossFit was like when we started CrossFit was still like on the up and up like there's a lot of gyms popping up everywhere. I started in Um, 2012. Yeah like there was a lot of gyms that were just very like ours first one was very mom and pop-ish. Like it was kind of like, a, there was a bunch of coaches. Um, like you just coach to like pay for your membership, your membership. essentially. Yeah, exactly. Um, and a lot of people like they, they knew stuff, like they've been doing it for a while. They're decently fit, so they had experience, but it wasn't like, again, yeah, they were like super in depth uh, with explaining things or how to get better at things. Mm-hmm. So luckily I think that's slowly starting to become like phased out where the gyms that are succeeding are the ones that have really knowledgeable, really high, uh, class coaches and good quality coaches yeah because that makes the world a difference and it's like crossfit before essentially it was kind of founded on like 
just mix things up and like how the first CrossFit Games had yeah, the, the hopper. hopper. It was like, yeah, it was just, you know, throw different things together and your body's gonna adapt, it's gonna learn, it's gonna grow. But then like, again, if you wanna get better at cleans, it's not just, oh, clean every now and then it's gonna go up. It's like, you have to be pretty detailed and structured and like, okay, we need to break down what yeah. you're not getting better at cleans. If you guys are interested in seeing my uh, clean regiment, go to my Instagram, Roger Lopez. <laughs> you can see me uh, clean attempt 205. Uh, I would max out my clean oh, your old video every single day because <laughs> I had no idea how to get better. So I was like, well, if I just max out every day. Yeah, my, our gym had open gym on Sundays. I just go and I just be snatching and cleaning and just yeah. kind of just like, Okay. <laughs> Going to have you for the day. Exactly. Call it yeah. the day. So that's how you got, that's how you got better. Not my eyes. It was like, just do it more. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, with my experience, when I started CrossFit, it's kind of a similar situation. Like I had been doing weightlifting for like football uh, for a while and I've been doing some bodybuilding stuff. So I kind of had the idea of like, um, like uh, mechanics and like how to properly squat and how to things like that, even though it was like nowhere near like as much as I know now. It was like, I had an idea of how to move to an extent. So when it comes to like, I have an old video, I think one of my oldest videos on my Instagram, my original, my OG Instagram is when like Instagram doing, started videos. Yeah. When Instagram still had like the filters around it, like yeah. you could like put the weird captions on it and stuff. Um, there's like a video, a video of me clean 225, like my first six months in a CrossFit. Dude. And it was, yeah, I was super pumped and it looked pretty good. But, um, when it comes to other things like muscle ups and different stuff, like it was very, very hard to how do I get a muscle up? I literally just jumped on the rings every day and kept trying until it happened because no one gave me the proper steps on how to do it. Or people like would watch you and they'd be like, okay, yeah, Try you're, this. Doing, you're doing this. I want you to like, yeah, come a little, like it was again, very vague. Um, so when I started CrossFit, fell in love, um, was going literally six to seven days a week. Again, like going to open gym on Sundays and just messing around and doing stuff. And then it got to the point where I was like, I wanted to take my level one just to have it. And just cause I, I was, again, I was so- Wanted like, some knowledge. Yeah, I wanted to learn as much as I could cause I love CrossFit. And I am like, hey, it's still making me better. Like there's n nothing to lose other than a thousand dollars of me taking my level one. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know what I like more than anything, dude? More than my motorcycle? More than Lamborghinis, dude? Knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out um, to Ty Lopez. Uh, but yeah, so like I took my level one and then it's like on, during the Sunday open gym and I was just snatching, messing around. I told, happened to tell the owner at the time that, hey man, I, you know, I took my level one. Uh, you know, I just to literally just bring it up. He's like, oh, do you want to start interning? And I was like, yep, cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So that was like literally just me saying, like me going to take my level one and me saying it was to help me get into uh, coaching. So I started interning and shadowing and like I was literally at the gym in the morning. Every day. I'd go to work. Yeah. I'd come back to like shadow or That's crazy. teach fundamentals and stuff. Yeah, it was like which I see people doing now at our gym, because we're at the gym all the time. So sometimes, you know, it can be like, kind of, some days, sometimes mundane, it's like doing the same thing over and over, but like some people come to the gym like every single day, even if it's just like mobilize and do accessory pieces, because mm -hmm. like people love it. Like this is their release and their getaway from, you know, daily life and all the mundane stuff that they have to go through with work. So like, this is like their playtime. Yep. So then again, yeah, like how you said, like I wanted to be like as knowledgeable as the I could and best. learn as much that no one, no one ever was. was. I wanted to teach them like, yeah, this is how you do this, how you do that. Um, and it was funny because we haven't said the name of the gym, but if you watch any of our other podcasts, you know what gym it is. Um, the, the, mem the coaches at the time, I'm, the coaches have changed so much since then, but the coaches at the time, we all took a survey or email was sent out to all the members for yeah. a survey. Who's your favorite coach? Who does the yeah. best job? Yeah. Their experience with them. Is there any times you, they, that they haven't been helpful or they like how, how much you like them? I got like a 93 overall. And other coaches that were there for quite some time were getting like 60 something and like literally like in yeah. horrible scores. Well, that's why you got fired. <laughs> that's why. <I> am. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, I, I learned so much with starting because it wasn't just like teaching people. It's something, something I had to learn very quick. I think I mentioned this in one of the other podcasts again that like I was coaching a guy and I was like my first week of interning. I was pumped. I was like digging it. Let's I was, go. Woo! Yeah. I was, I was obviously we're younger, so we're like more competitive and more like antsy to like go all out. Um, where there was this one guy, he was dying at the end of the workout. Double unders? Huh? He was doing double unders? Not that one. Oh, okay. Uh, he was doing, um, that was in our last podcast. Yeah. We were doing, um, it was like some barbell work. It was like front squats. I was like, you really stood, stood at the bar the whole time and just did the bar, mm -hmm. barbell. So then I was like, yo, you got this man. All right, short break, blah, blah, blah. And then he started, he got up, he like, just started cussing at me. He's like, let me go, I'm like, leave me alone, blah, 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 shut up. And like that was definitely awakening of like, um, okay, not everyone needs to be intense with it. Um, but I learned very quickly like 
how to approach certain people on certain things. A 50 year old lady's not gonna go the same intensity as a 20 year old guy. Yeah, um, although that guy might be, could have been a lot nicer instead of an asshole. Yeah, but regardless, um, yeah, it's like you learn how to communicate, how to lead, how to be um, all around, communicate better with a lot of people. So um, that was like how I got started and it was like, it was, I learned a lot. Yeah. For sure, because it was so in depth and it wasn't just like, oh, I coach one class a day to make it work. It was like, no, I want to do really, this. Yeah, I was coaching and it was just like, how I, how I function is like, if I can see an immediate reward for the more work I put in, I'm gonna put in more work. Like when I was working back in my other jobs, like at the grocery store and be like a merchandiser, it was like, oh, if I work overtime, I'm gonna get time and a half. Like, I'm gonna get paid for this. Yeah, I'll fucking do overtime. Like, no worries. So I would always be doing one more and I get my, my little pay stub from my gym of like me coaching. And it was like, you had 22 hours this week. You got 500 bucks. Whatever $10. It was. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try to get 24 hours this week. And I was like, always covering shifts. I was always able to make trades. Like, okay, I'll cover the two morning classes. You cover my one evening class. Like, yeah. So, I don't know. And how, how long after we met did you quit your full-time job? Mm, uh, probably like a year, year and a half later. Are you sure? I thought uh, it was pretty quick. Say. After well, we met? Yeah. Well, you were coaching the other gym mm -hmm. when we met and it wasn't for maybe six months-ish. Uh, I can't remember, I can't remember. Like, I was at that job about a year and a half. Maybe it was like six months or less. Yeah. It was a job for a year and a half and then we probably met like with me a year into CrossFit and then shortly after that I quit because I was uh, coaching at the two spots and I was going back to school, kind of. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I found out about CrossFit when I was already in college and I was a music major and my buddy told me about like this weightlifting class and I was small, I was like 130 pounds and I, was, I wanted to get into like lifting weights and I wanted to learn about it. And I remember taking this, it was like Kines, uh, introduction to weight training or weightlifting or something and uh, I loved every second of it like I loved being in that class I loved learning about hypertrophy and strength and how to approach this type of workout and I think I got introduced to CrossFit like halfway through that time uh, but I remember I got a hundred percent on every test like every class and I was like you know maybe I should start doing this because it's a lot more interesting to me uh, I think the battery's gonna die a lot more interesting to me and I enjoy it and that's when I started coaching uh, or that's when I got into CrossFit started wanting to be a coach because I feel like I knew a little bit more than just the level one originally you were you were going to school to be music major in music. A music performance major when you were doing the weightlifting class was that during the time you were also going for the music major yeah yeah so I hadn't changed my major yet and what was awesome is once I did that way that it was intro to introduction to weight training um, once I finished that class and I realized that like I I don't know if it was I was like, just good at it and was learning quickly or because I was so interested in it it was super easy to study and like remember the facts that I was learning um, but when I changed my major you have to declare like a, a track like what is you're gonna what's your focus gonna be and I told them well, I was, CrossFit yeah well so I was instead of doing like music history or I'm sorry um, like history of kinesiology or kinesiology and nutrition etc I was able to pick custom classes to put into I what did they end up calling it kinesiology with a focus on like sports science or something okay so I took I took classes that would help me in the CrossFit world so I took like techniques of coaching um, like a, a gerontology nutrition class nutrition class for sports performance um, and those were after taking like your low level kines classes those were like the higher level classes where you go a little bit more in depth uh, and like learning how to program honestly techniques of coaching was the best class that I've, I've ever taken because you learn how to work with so many different people I took coaching for um, so many different types is in the sense of like like how they mentally think about things or type of so like people like with injuries people that like, like all of the above you know like wow. how are you gonna deal with this how are you gonna run a class if you're dealing with um, it was geared towards any sport that you were interested in so like when the class started you told them what sport you were doing I was mm -hmm. the only one doing CrossFit at the time like no one even knew what CrossFit was everybody doing like basketball or I want to coach baseball in high school so I had to it was really interesting like we had to make games for our classes we had to pick and choose things how we run the classes how we would score it um, so it was it was challenging, but it was cool. Uh, like I remember, I made up a game. Uh, I can't remember what I. I think I call it like King of the King of the Platform or something, where you all go on on the platform. You set up a bar. 
you pick any move, like let's say we want to do from the blocks, you know, and you like, you have three attempts. So it's kind of like a weightlifting meet, but you pick different movements uh, that are weightlifting spe uh, specific. And let's say it'd be me and you, and we, because we're different weight classes, we would pick three weights that we wanted to hit. And we'd have to go and like, you go, I go. And if you did this, you had a point. If you took a step, you'd lose a point. If it was solid, oh, wow. you got it. Like, so like, it was cool to make games that I could do in, cross, in the CrossFit world. Um, and then you just learned a lot about coaching, like being personable with people, how to create a warm up, how to create uh, a curriculum for your class. Uh, and it, that helped so much in CrossFit because I think that's what's so different uh, about us is that that's what we bring to the CrossFit world, whereas when we started, the CrossFit world was like, hey guys, this is the warm up, this is the workout, uh, all right, uh, warm up. And then, you know, some of the coaches would like sit down and chill. But you learn really quickly that while people were warming up, you, you know, you talk to them, you see if they have any energy, injuries, you see if you need to modify anything for them, you see how they're moving. Oh, that looks kind of weird. Let's do this too. Uh, hey, you mobilize this, stretch this out. Uh, so it was cool to be able to pick my own classes that helped me as a CrossFit coach. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's yeah. That's why I became a coach because I was tired of getting bullshit answers from people, and I wanted to give people real answers. It blows my mind now about how much we know and how much. So like, <clears throat> you coach the weightlift or the barbell class, which is essentially weightlifting at our gym. Yeah. And like, you had people doing a bunch of like accessory movements and things like before they even touch a barbell right. to make sure everything's warmed up, everything's firing correctly. Like they're using the right muscle groups, like you, and to stay injury free. So you you do so much prehab for them so they stay healthy. Yeah. Where it's like back in the day, dude, it was like literally like, all right guys, go jog, let's do some push-ups. Three rounds right. of Cindy. Yeah, exactly. Max match. <laughs> so it's, it's crazy. I don't know how everyone wasn't injured back then, yeah. um, which they might've been, but I don't, back when we started. Everybody's shoulders yeah, were broken. I wasn't really asking anybody. Like back then my body was definitely a little more resilient and kind of could take more abuse. But like, I thought like, oh, you know, you have a little bit of aches and pains is what it is. It's kind of like part of the territory mm -hmm. where it's like, no, it's not the case at all. And now how much we know, it's like, I try to include more of those accessory things before we even touch a bar. Um, like whether it be in the warm up or the stretches or both. It's so, like, I try to make sure everyone's moving correctly. And it's like, even then people are still like, yeah, man, this will hurt. It's like randomly people will be totally healthy the next day. Yeah, I jacked up my shoulder on the cleans yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's work around yeah. it. Let's try to fix it. Let's try to do this and that. So it's, I, I feel like, again, most coaches are having to take that route. If you want to be successful across the gym and you want to actually grow or not just be like some gym that has 30 members, you have to be very, very knowledgeable and be able to like keep people healthy because people keep getting injured. They're going to pause the membership or they're going to go somewhere else where that's more detail. You know. On it. Exactly. So, so I, would, I would actually say the biggest thing that I've learned for my whole, you know, going to school, being a coach, et cetera, and just life in general, I know I'm not that old, but is kind of old. what I couldn't stand is that when I ask somebody something when I was learning, if they didn't know, they would tell me some bullshit reason. So I made it a point that if anybody ever asks me anything that I don't know, I will say, I don't know. But what's different is I'll go research and find out, mm -hmm. you know, hey, I, I've been eating this and I'm feeling like this. Ooh, fuck. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's probably this or hey, my shoulder's hurting. Well, I'll tell them, hey, here's some ideas of what might help it. Let's try them out. Does your shoulder still hurt? Yeah, it fucking hurts. All right. That's like the scope of my knowledge. I, I'm capped out. I'm going to go ask my physical therapist. I'll ask my chiropractor. I'll ask somebody who's a, like a little An bit expert. more movement specialist, you know, and then I'll come back to you. But I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, that should have fixed it. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong. Or I'll watch a lift and someone's like, how was that? And sometimes I don't catch something and I'm like, there's something off, but I can't, I can't figure it out. You know, I'm not just going to be like, oh, it's probably this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what, that's why I became a coach too. Cause I was, again, I was so tired of people just being like, Hey, I want to get bigger. Okay. We'll eat more food. So like, you're going to do this and you're going to do this. And it was just BS. Instead of them saying like, I don't really know, uh, I can help you research or I can put you in contact with somebody who knows it's just a bunch of BS. Mm -hmm. So. If you guys ever ask me a question, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you the answer. I'm going to say, I don't know. And then I'll ask somebody who hopefully has a little bit more. Well, somebody who does. I'm not going to go ask somebody that doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Or people that come to the gym for weeks and weeks are like, yeah, this still keeps hurting even though you have showed them things that I tried to maybe help fix it. Where it's like, okay, maybe, yeah, go talk to your physician. Maybe yeah. go get like an appointment to have it looked at by a professional that Absolutely. knows more about your joints or whatever is bugging you. Yeah. Um, yeah, because we only we only know, know so someone. much. And I can research and learn over time, and that's the goal, but... Yeah.
Don't keep letting pain be the normal. And if you're a coach, don't just bullshit your way through every answer. If you don't know something, like just take responsibility for not knowing and then get that person to help some other way, you know? Use your other skills, be mm -hmm. resourceful. So, do you want to talk about how like what it's like being a coach? Like what's a typical day? Like what do you do? Like how you program, how you do this and that, like how you schedule things with yeah, like, clients? Yeah, sure. Um, so being a CrossFit coach, it's awesome because uh, this is what I wear to work every day. Uh, but I think number one, pe number one reason people do any sort of like group activity or activity classes, classes is because they want to have fun. Uh, I, I think there was a study that went out to professional athletes, amateur athletes, and then like recreational athletes. And the only one that didn't have number one as f having fun was professional athletes, but I think it was like a number two. You know, mm -hmm. first was number one was winning. Um, <laughs> making money. <laughs> making money, yeah. So like number, having fun is the most important thing. So I try to structure my classes on, I want to entertain the people that are coming. I want them to make them feel good for an hour because uh, that's how long that I have them. Uh, and then I want to make sure they move safely and well because they're injured. They're not going to be having any, any fun. So kind of like mixing entertainment and knowledge in one class. So, you know, that's... You want to define uh, entertainment? Entertainment. I, don't know, just, I feel like... Okay, so like when somebody walks in the gym, you make them feel as special as they can. You know, you, you either... Some people like when you're like, yo, what up, honey? How's it going? They love that. Like, oh, what's up, dude? You know, some people don't like that. Some people like coming in the gym. They need a second to kind of like release. And so you'd be like, hey, man, how's it going? Are uh, you doing barbell? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm doing barbell. All right, dude, good to go. You have a good day? Like, cool. Um, and then you try to remember things about like th what they said in the, in the past or like maybe they went somewhere this weekend. Hey, how was that? Is that pretty cool? Cool. How's your knee feeling? I know it was a little bit wonky last time. All right, let's do the class. Hey, guys, this is the class. Um, and you're just bringing energy. You're feeding energy into the class. You, the way I program is I take what, because I program barbell, um, I don't do uh, CrossFit classes. CrossFit is probably has a lot more things going into it. Barbell is like, hey, we're gonna do some progressive overload. We're gonna change the movements every so often. Uh, but I go based off my class. So like the majority of the people come three to four days a week. And every time we hit the end of the cycle and we try to max out, I'll see the things that they're really struggling with. You know, Maybe it's pulling from the ground. Their first pull is just trash. Uh, and we need to work on that. So the next eight weeks, we're gonna be working on that, still trying to sustain everything else that we did, uh, but it's not like what I wanna do. It's not, oh yeah, this program is the best program ever. It's, all right, the majority of the people have you know some shoulder stability issues and they're pulling from the ground, isn't that great? So that's how I program for the next eight weeks. That's our focus and would we'll do weightlifting that way. And that's literally, there's no right or wrong with programming, like unless if no one PRs, but like think about it as in the sense of like a professional sports team. Football, there's 32, 32 professional sports teams. Every single year, there's new ones going to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. They're not all doing the same thing. They're all doing their own individual things. They all have to assess, how do we get better? How do I improve? Yeah. So if you watch the class, you say, okay, everyone's struggling with the first pool. Yeah, that's let's work on that. Yeah, that's what's gonna get the majority of us better and stronger all together. So yeah, yeah it's, whereas like if you see someone just like struggle to jerk and make, I'm right, focusing on jerks now, but everyone else's jerk was okay. Well, it's like, it doesn't make much sense. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta and, look at the whole. Right, and I'll also say that how I approach things to make people feel welcome and nice is like introducing people to each other or doing like a fun fact or a team theme. Like that has helped a ton. Mm -hmm. My hair freaking wild right now. Is it, it looks tall. Good. Oh, it looks good. It's tall. Um, and making, I always stare at Roderick's hair. Always, all yeah. the time. Uh, making people feel comfortable sharing uh, anything about, but I mean anything about anything, but primarily like if they don't understand something, that's super important because some people have made, I, I just actually put a post on my coach's Instagram about this and I had a lot of people reach out to me and they were like, yeah, we actually left our gym because my coach would always make me feel stupid wow. about not knowing something, you know, uh, or yeah, we left our gym because they wouldn't, they, like, they didn't want to teach us, they would just like talk about themselves, which we see all the time, you know? It'd be like, oh, hey, how did I PR'd? Oh, what'd you PR? Oh, I hit 225. Oh, dude, my snatch is 240. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of coach are you? The coach should be- That's no, crazy. Yeah, no matter what, no matter what I tell Hudson, Hudson should, unless, unless you have a really good relationship with this person and you guys can talk shit like Hudson and I, if Hudson tells me anything, I can be like, yeah, you suck. 
but we know we're being friendly and fun. But if Hudson's an athlete at my you gym. You suck, it's congratulations and hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if Hudson comes to me and we're doing snatches or clean and jerks, I'm like, all right, guys, we're going to do hang snatches. If Hudson goes, what's a hang snatch? And I go, we've done this six times. You imbecile. Yeah, you idiot. It's like, <laughs> that doesn't make that person feel comfortable or want to ever share anything they don't know. So now if I'm talking to that same person after I called him an idiot and I'm like, hey, uh, go ahead and push your knees out of the way. They're not going to go, oh, I don't know what that means. They're going to go, okay. And then I'll go to them like, push your knees out of the way. And, and oh, I don't, you know, they're not gonna say, I don't know, or, cause you, can, you already made them feel dumb. You gotta be like, oh, hang clean, that's from here, no big deal. Super patient, make them feel comfortable sharing any of their problems. Or if you're t- t- like, hey dude, I need you to drive your knees out of the way. They're like, I don't know what that means. That, I love hearing that. If they, if I'm talking to somebody and I tell them something and they have no idea what I'm talking about and they express to me that they have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm like, thank you for telling me you don't understand because now I'm gonna approach it a different way and try to get you to understand it. Instead of just going, I gotcha, and they have no idea what I said, mm-hmm. you know? That, that's a lose-lose for both of us. The best way to, from, I can't remember where I've heard this from, but I've, I, know, I know it's very well common practice huh. of like, I, I said that. the best way to, uh, have someone like come to realization or accept like what you're telling them. So like, let's say you have a really stubborn athlete that like struggles with their first pull. Like, the, like they think they're saying tight and as soon as they pull, they start to round. It's like, no, I, I chest this thing up. Like it feels good. Like I'm still hitting the list. Why yeah. would you tell me to fix it? Like if it's, I'm still doing okay. Yeah. Um, the best way to have someone else like understand what you're saying and have them do it is to have them realize it themselves. So I'm trying to think of an example. Like um, whenever I have someone work out, like, for the most part, like we always, we always preach form 100% of the time, especially yeah. when they're warming up. So just warm up, grab the bar and just do some half-ass squats and then load it up and then do, you know, you'd half-ass warm-up squats. Now your weight squats are shitty. It's like you have to make sure they're mo- moving really nicely from the get-go. So that way w- when it gets heavier, if it falters a little bit, it's very minor and it's easy to correct. So if someone, like whenever someone does a lift and like I see it and it's not like ideal or there's something that they can improve on, I always tell them, how did that feel? And they say, well, because usually it's gotten to the point now where I say it so much, they're like, you know, they know Ooh, I'm something gonna, was wrong. Yeah, exactly. They know I'm going to correct them, yeah. but I want them to see if they can come up with it themselves. Like, oh, well, you know, it felt kind of uh, wobbly. It didn't feel too co- good coming up. I felt like I was hunching over. Well, I think if you drive those knees out and it'll help you like stay more stable on the bottom and you're not going to have that, that collapsing feeling that you have, like drive your knees out harder and exaggerate it. And then think about leading with your chest and way up out of the squat, like especially when it comes to, like front squats. And then the next step, they're like, oh yeah, I felt better. So it's like, I try to have them assess themselves so that way they can realize like I'm not just telling them keep your chest up and they're like oh I thought my chest was up if I say how's it feel well it didn't feel the best okay well I think it might be this or like what do you think like you know or sometimes I'll record them I'll grab their phone and record it and say what do you think and like oh yeah I, I realize yeah that's that's a huge thing people think that they're again the, the example of the first pull it feels good it feels okay then you show it to them like oh I get it now like it's when you say chest up, it means, you know, not here. Oh, my chest is up. It means it's high, you know, ideal position. So I think that's a big part of like being a good coach is again, not making people feel, people feel stupid, but also teaching them. Yeah. That's one thing that you preach that is Always. like why your athletes are self-sufficient so well. Exactly. It's not that we don't want them to be dependent. You don't want to tell someone every single time what a hang snatch is. Yeah. You want them to learn and understand. And that's why a lot of your athletes, when they come in early to class, they're mobilizing, doing stuff they need to prior because, because they're, they're, they're no. learning and they know how to move and they know how to, they're building themselves to be athletes. Yeah. I'm actually proud of that. Well, I'm posting something on coach, my coach Instagram today about that. And it's, Follow it's, at Coach Roger. Yeah, it's, it's talking to the coaches. I talk to the coaches and the athletes every so often because, I mean, I'm an athlete myself. I have a coach, uh, and the relationship there is super important. Um, but you'll see it here, or you'll see it on my coach's Instagram. And if you're a coach and you guys are con- constantly spoon-feeding your athletes everything, they're never going to learn. Now, I agree that a coach should help guide the athlete to get, you know, to get better. And you, sh- you can remind them as many times as, as you need. But at the same time, every class, you should be teaching them something, you know, Hey guys, this is why we're doing so as marches before we back squat or clean or getting into any squatting position. And some of the athletes, they're going to know, Oh, nice. So when I have a hard time doing that, I can do so as marches. Well, we did two sets of 10 in the warm up on Tuesday. You know, I'm going to be squatting by myself when I go, you know, away in my friend's garage. I probably should, I'm going to do so as marchers before I do that. And like slowly, like how do you said, he'll, he'll see my athletes come in and they're already, you know, like rolling out the, like the pieces they should be rolling out. 
and they, they're mobilizing the right pieces and activating the right pieces. They're not just like mashing everything and trying to activate everything. Um, so it's important, like teach your athletes why you do the things you do. And it kind of stems back to like when you said, like uh, a st you have stubborn athletes. If you give them a reason why you're doing what you're doing, more times than not, people will be pretty uh, receptive. You know, if I go, Hudson, go clean your room. And you're like, why? And it's like, because I, I, be. yeah. I said so. It's like, <laughs> well, I'm not wanna, I don't want to clean my room. You know, that works in the movement too. Hey, get your chest up. Fuck you, I back squat more than you. You know, it's like, <laughs> all right, hey, if we have this, you know, chest down, upper back's getting round, it's doing this, the lower back putting pressure here. Over time, this can happen. So it's up to you. We're going to work on it. Uh, and usually people will be like, oh, I didn't know that. Thanks for that knowledge. Now I'm going to try to focus on this position because I'm afraid of that end thing happening. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I was gonna say something else about that. My back is so itchy. What the hell? Uh, what was I gonna say about that? But talking. Oh, you were talking about like how you'll ask athletes, like you know, how did that feel? Uh, I ask that my athletes that all the time. No, I don't ask them how it felt though. Yeah, I can't remember. Okay. Well, but same same idea. Spinning off what you said, kind of, and then what we both do. I know we both do this to athletes because I saw you do it to Alicia the other day, where it's you'll see someone for example, doing squats and it's like, they can't get into the right position no matter what because of imbalances or, you know, whatever it may be, mobility restrictions. So you'd say, hey, every time you come before class, I want you to do this yeah. because it's gonna make it feel better, it's gonna feel good. And let's say the next day it comes to that movement, they do it and like, you tell them like, yeah, look, you've noticed the difference, you see how much better mm -hmm. the position looks and how it feels and probably, you probably do more weight this way now um, because it's gonna, you're moving better. Yeah. And then it's like one day you catch them, they're not, they don't do it, and then it kind of goes back to the old ways and it's yeah. like you, you get on, hey, did you do that, that exercise I gave you? No. Yeah. And then I they feel. Exactly. Good. And then like, it, again, it teaches them like oh. we're, trying to, we're, yeah, we're trying to focus on the little nitty gritty stuff because every day you're trying to teach your athlete something and then I'll finish off real quick. Yeah. Um, it's like, for example, some days, so in the next couple of weeks, if any of the athletes that from our gym are watching this, I have a workout that's uh, just running and rowing. That's all it is. And it's like some coaches... I know at our previous gyms that we would coach, I'd see coaches that'd be like, all right guys, here's the strength, yeah, hit it, boom, it's back squats, all right, super simple. All right, now workouts running around, grab a rower, all right, 10 seconds. Where it's like, again, you wanna teach them something every single day, so if I know I have, so it's so hard to do so much in an hour. You can only do so much in an hour. So for example, if the strength was snatches, I'll make sure, because snatches are so complex, I'll spend more time on snatches. Workouts running and rowing, I might give a tip or two, and then we're gonna start the clock. Whereas if, if it's back squats, it's pretty simple and straightforward. A lot of people at our gym back squat very well because we instill the, the right movements. And then it comes to rowing, so you have a little bit more time. I'll hop on the rower. Hey guys, when you're rowing, make sure you're focusing on keeping your spine tall. Yeah. You are hinging and not just shoving your knees forward using your quads. Make sure you're keeping the straight chain smooth. Mm -hmm. Like even though anyone can row and anyone can run, doesn't mean they know how to do it. It's funny when I see people run on the streets and their running's kind of like, don't make fun of me. <laughs> I'm like, what are you guys, like you're, like, you are wasting so much energy yeah, on this run. Yeah. yeah, I'm by no means a fancy runner, but I know correct, like how to, you know, pose run a little Be bit. I know too. how to stay, yeah. I, that's why I have to maximize my technique <laughs> for sure. Cause I don't, don't want to waste any excess energy, but it's like, Every single day, again, teaching athletes to be a little bit better is like what makes the world a difference and keeps people there and gets people to understand that, hey, if I listen to my coach, he wants me to get better. It's not just setting yeah. up mediocrity. I'm like, not, yeah. Anytime I say anything, it's because I want you to be better, not because I want you to stay weaker than stay us. Stay weak. Because I want to feel empowered. Yeah, so what I was going to say earlier. Now, I don't know why I, I know why I started doing this, um, but it has helped buttloads. And I don't know if this is the most butt correct loads. way to do this or approach this way but it's worked for me. So I'll give you an example and it, this everybody, even, even when I started weightlifting, I would start with my feet pretty wide. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I would tell people, hey, bring your feet in and they bring their feet in and it would feel like shit. Like they're like, that didn't feel good at all. Like, I don't like that. I hate moving my feet. I want to start you, wider. Coach. I hate you coach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then it brings me back to, I remember talking, um, I don't remember what this is called. You guys probably Google it. And like the three stages of learning, there's different, you know, uh, hypothesis on like the stages of learning, but like the first stage is like super awkward. It's hard to take cues. You're not sure how to do it. The stage two is like, you can sometimes do it easily. Uh, you can take cues and it's fine. And then stage three is like, it's automatic. You're not even thinking about the movement anymore. Um, so we're going to talk about like snatching and clean and jerking. So let's say Hudson's been snatching. He's set in his ways. He snatches the same way and he starts with his feet wide. 
and it's comfortable for him and he's PR that way, etc. So when I deal with that, I've learned to move that way. You've learned to move that way. You say it's efficient, but it's just what I've done. It's just what you do and you're already in late in stage three. So if I come to Hudson and I say, Hudson, bring your feet in. I've now given Hudson something to think about and it's going to bring him back to stage two. Again, this is not like super scientific. I don't know exactly how it works, but that's the idea. Mm -hmm. So now no longer are you snatching or clean and jerking easily. Now you're back to stage two and you have to think about something again. So what I do with athletes when I bring it, when I see them snatching consistently, I'm going to, I'll give them a cue, but I won't say, Hey, do this because they'll probably do it once. And then when I look away, they'll do it again. I'll say, look, bringing your feet in is a little bit more powerful from the hips, etc. Now it's going to feel like shit because you are bringing you back, you know, like you, now you're going to have to think about something. It might feel off, but over time, this is going to be a much better position. If you hate it, Maybe we'll work with your new foot position, but this is where we usually start. Have you ever done it this way? Well, no, I, you know, this felt more comfortable or this coach, coach told me this. And I say, look, I'm not trying to change your entire, you know, I'm not trying to change everything that you do, but try this out and let me know how it feels. But you have to try it for at least the entire day or at least this whole week. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just do it once and say you hate it. And a lot of times they're really receptive to be like, okay, I'm expecting it to feel bad because no longer is it going to be second nature. I'm going to have to be thinking about something. It might, might mess something else up along the way, uh, but I'm going to give it a go and, and try it. And I've been like, it blows my mind. Uh, I'll have athletes come to the gym who've been doing CrossFit for three years, four years, and I'll give them a cue, but I, I'll lead with that long, like, look, it's going to feel like shit. You're going to have to think about something again. It might bring your maxes down right now, but let's see if it makes you move more efficient. And, and they'll come to me like, Hey, you know, thanks for that. Like, I've been told to bring my feet in, but I didn't know why. And I, yeah, it feels really good in my feet. And I'll be like, wow, cool. I'm, that, you know, I'm glad it helped. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. It's not just, not every cue is gonna make you like instantly feel better. Like, oh wow, I fixed yeah. it right now. It's like, yeah, relearning movement patterns where, yeah, I like that, I like that, yeah. what you said, like one, two, three, it takes you back a notch, but then yeah. you're gonna get back to it and it's gonna be better. Like um, you have an injury, you're at, you know, you're at this point and then an injury kind of brings you back down. Then you learn from your injury and you get hopefully better and you progress from that. Injury is not going to, depending on how severe it is, not going to hold you back forever and you can, you know, build off of it. Yeah. And get smarter and learn see what works. Learn how to not do that again. Especially if you have an injury. Cause if you've been squatting for years and years and years, then you have a back injury because during a squat, okay, I'm going to do something wrong. <laughs> I mean, um, but yeah, it, like, it lets you know, like, okay, I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn more. And the goal is with you, what you're doing is preventing them from either having, uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for plateaus or setbacks or injuries yeah. to where they can, you know, it's all about progressively getting better. Yep. So I had one more thing that I wanted to finish off with. Um, it's also being, uh, super excited and giving your athletes plenty of feedback. Yeah. Uh, and like positive feedback also. And the feedback that they need. Yeah, true. Yeah, everybody's different. Yeah, some people, some people like literally want you to like, they're like little puppies with their eyes all big. Hey, yeah. what, what, give me something to work on. Yeah. Give me something to work on. And be nice about it. Yeah. And some people are like, cuss at me. You're like, yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, exactly. whoa, okay. All right, all right. Yeah. Drive your fucking it's, knees out. It's, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. So I was like, there's different types of people. Like there's so many different types of, uh, uh, you know, people's uh, mentalities and how they think the when they're in the gym. Characters, that's a good word. Uh, People will kind of like, I'll see someone do it clean and it's ugly and they kind of like walk off like, hey, I hit it though. I kind of go add more weight and I like, I'll have to go to them and be like, hey, on that last one, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's other athletes that'll like be very hesitant. And it's very perfect. Tough. Yeah. And they look at you like, they're like, I'm going to drop weight. That was too heavy. Like, <laughs> no, you're going to add some weight. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I want to say, yeah, it's like giving people positive feedback too. So that way they understand that they're on the right path and that they can trust you. Cause if you're always just tearing them down, some people might not be as excited that way. And even though like you mean all good and you want to help them get better, they might be like, what? I feel like I can, I'm never doing anything right. Yeah. Where it's like, sometimes I'll tell someone for like weeks and weeks, chest up, chest up, chest up. Like on their squats, like every single time until one time they do set of squats and I like, they, they rack the weight and they see me. I'm like, Dang. I'm like, yeah. and they're like, they look at me like they're, they get all chirpy because they are happy because they see that, you know, they're, I'm, they're I'm excited. Yeah. Off, yeah, exactly. It's all for it's, um, I'm not just here to make you feel dumb. Mm -hmm. The goal is not to do that at all. The goal is to make you learn and grow and then again, be self-sufficient to where if you like, this is my goal and what I think of every single time I coach. Cause the example that you gave of like, people will come to the gym 
uh, will go to like a CrossFit or regular gym for three or four years and they'll come to us and then like we see them move and it's like not what we would like or we think we can make help them move better to lift more weight or go faster or whatever it is. So then you tell them something and they might be not as receptive to it at first. Um, I kind of just drew a blank. What was I talking about? Not being receptive, people come from the gym from like three, four years. Oh yeah, but then, but then I want to make sure every single day, like we also said before, I want to teach someone to get 1% better every single day. So if one of our members goes to a different gym, they they're going to be the best freaking mover, mover in there. Yeah, exactly. I want, like, they're going to go show up and they're going to know how to mobilize on their own, they're going to know how to stretch everything. Because that's like, there's nothing, uh, it depends on, again, the person, but like, either funny or frustrating for me that when someone comes in and says, yeah, I've been doing this for years and I watch them move and, and I'm like, know. oh my, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, honestly, I don't think that's, it's not frustrating, it's more... It's frustrating it's like when, when you try to, yeah, it that's you, but when you try upset. to correct them. When you try to correct them, you're like, well, like, they think that just because they're doing it so long, that makes them good. Yeah. Especially in doing fundamentals. You try to teach someone something how to snatch and they're like, oh yeah, I've, been, I've done this before. Done and then you watch it and it's like, that's oh. suck. That makes me feel bad for the other, like, Maybe that person just has a hard time learning, or they just go to a gym where they, they settle for complacency. Well, the coach just doesn't doesn't want them to, or doesn't know how to. I don't know. It kind, mm -hmm. of, it kind of bums me out. Yeah, it bums me out when someone's like, "Yeah, I've been doing crossover for ten years, and they just still move really, really horribly." Um, yeah, that sucks. Which is when people sign up for a crossfit gym, it's all dependent on what you want to get out of the gym. Do you want a gym with super nice? Uh, a super Facilities. nice facility? Do you want all the equipment in the world, all the fancy specialty equipment? Do you want coaches? Do you want um, the cheapest price? Yeah. It all depends on you, but obviously, like, coaching is first, man. Coaching should be, that's the whole point. Otherwise, go to another gym that pays you, you only got to pay three bucks a month, yeah. and you get you all the, the same equipment. Or EOS. Yeah, um, like, no there's so many other gyms you could pay that are a lot cheaper if you know what you're doing on your own. But, like, at the end of the day, like, the main things you're paying for is coaching, and typically, the more you pay, the, the better the coaching is going to be. If you go to a gym, so there's the, uh, there's other gyms that I know of that are, the, the prices are super, super cheap. You know, it's like, you know, almost half of what we charge essentially. Yeah. But it's like, I'll, I'll hear people that'll drop in, like people come, we live in San Diego, so it's like pretty popular. People will go to different gyms and they'll come to us and they'll be like, yeah, like this gym was that, this gym was this, but I really like your gym. And it's like, that's something that we try to make sure like, every, like everybody who comes through has that experience. Yeah, the best experience possible. And like, it's not, it doesn't matter if you're a drop in or if you're a member, like we're going to make sure like we get you the best hour of your, of your, day and like hopefully help you learn a lot so like when it comes to paying like you get what you pay for um most so, of the time yeah so it, it depends there's outliers there's gyms that charge you know 200 plus dollars a month and they're not personable they have coaches that are knowledgeable but the coaches don't yeah get um, their knowledge out yeah so it's nice so for we offer uh at our gym a free saturday class if you have crossfit experience will you drop in and try a class and see how it goes and if you like it uh because at the end of the day, like also, uh, we have people that we, that, you know, that w like the community aspect, that like having fun, that like, yeah. you know, it's very sociable at our gym as well. Uh, like that's the kind of atmosphere that we have where some gyms are kind of like, you just get, go in, get your hour of fitness and you'll get out. So it, there's, there's so many different things that yeah. uh, make what a gym's price is. So you have to kind of experience that and see what you want to do. I also recently heard of a CrossFit gym that doesn't let you take your shirt off. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. You can take your shirt off at Humanity. <laughs> as soon as you walk in the door, just take Shirt's it off. off. Yeah, you don't have to, you have to work out. You just come and get a fit aid and just take your shirt off yeah. and hang out. Um, but it's funny. So I, I think I'm, I think we we're talking about a lot of the same stuff we've mentioned before in other podcasts slightly. But there's a member at our gym that recently moved somewhere in the middle, Midwest and um, or somewhere. I don't know. I can't remember. But she said like, yeah, they don't offer fundamental classes. You just get thrown into the class, which might work for them. Who's they might this? have uh, summer. Oh. So there might be a gym that has small enough class, like let's, let's say their average class is only four or five, four or five people. Yeah. It might be easier for them to teach someone how to snatch in the very first day or how to do an overhead squat or whatever it is. But if like, I am a strong believer in what makes, what's going to help CrossFit uh, get rid of its stigma, which I feel like it slowly is, uh, but will help us like get rid of the bad name of CrossFit's bad for you or you get injured or it's all this and that, is having people do fundamentals or learn the basics and then progress from there. And I don't, just because someone, let's say you come in, whether it be fundamentals or not, and you come in, you learn the snatch or you're learning the snatch and it looks like garbage. Okay. okay, we are not snatching for the first little bit. I want you to do cleans, I want you to stretch, or I want you to do dumbbells, or I want you to do something different to where again, eventually we can build the fundamentals and then get to a snatch. Not everyone needs a snatch. Snatch is uh, a very beneficial movement, but it's not, something that you have to learn to be a functional human being. So 
not to saying that you shouldn't snatch it all, but I'm saying if, if you can barely get a barbell over your head, if you could barely strict press without like doing this, I don't want, I think you shouldn't be trying to do an overhead squat. Um, that's my, that's what I believe. That's what I take on. Like what's gonna keep CrossFit safe is like, keep it as simple as possible. People, when we have people doing back squats, if their squat looks absolutely atrocious, all right, you're doing a goblet squat to a bench for a while. You're gonna learn how to properly recruit the right Ooh. muscles. You're gonna yeah. mo mo get the mobility to be able to get into a nice uh, efficient squat position. And then from there, you get a barbell. From there, you get to add a little bit of weight. That's hard, that's hard to do for yeah. people. It's trusting the process and Your knowing that, trust that, trusting the coach and knowing that we're gonna get you there. It's because they, again, at the end of the day, we wanna keep you injury free, that's the most important. So when I coach a class, it's always safety first, then movement efficiency, then everything else comes after that. And then, then you wanna add, the, so then it's slowly increasing volume, then slowly increasing intensity. If I have someone that comes in the gym and they, um, they're brand new and we're doing Angie, like the 100 rep workout, hey, you're doing 40 reps of each. Cause trust me, you're just gonna still get a good workout in, it's gonna still kick your butt, you're still gonna be sore, but I don't want you spending 45 minutes on a workout taking everyone else 20 minutes to do. Not that I know how long it's gonna and be. And a week in the know. hospital. <laughs> yeah, exactly, get rhabdo from it. So also, also this is why my classes are more fun cause my top priority is fun. <laughs> Second priority is movement. <laughs> yeah, fun, fun is up there too. Yeah. Um, so that's, I feel like this video turned more into what makes a really good CrossFit coach, um, which I think there's still so much more we could dive into, but those are like definitely the, the biggest things. Fun, safety, progress, like those are the, the main factors. And if, you, if any of those are missing, assess, hey, Don't is this a gym me. that I want to be at? Is tattoos this gym that help me get better? Yeah, your if you're, coach your coach doesn't have tattoos. tattoos, they're not really about it. Yeah. Yeah, they're not really cool. They're kind of just, they probably work a nine to five job they can't wear tattoos at, so they can't really fully invest their time getting better at <laughs> coaching. So, you know, it, it's, it all adds up. Um, is there anything else you want to you mention before we? No. Okay, cool. That's a lot. That was a good episode. Um, Thank you guys if you watched all the way through. Um, it means a lot to us. Again, if you guys could you know, like this video, subscribe, feel free to share it with anyone else, uh, maybe at your gym or coaches or friends or whatever it is because um, you know, we want to help as many people as possible, not just in the gym, but with these videos too. If you guys can learn a bunch, that makes, it means a lot to us also. Um, so new video every Sunday and Wednesday. Make sure you subscribe if you're not. Um, if you're not already, follow us on Instagram and all the social medias and stuff. Yeah, cool. See ya. Thanks guys.